Hello, my beautiful students. It's me, Stu Sensei, your English teacher. And welcome back to another shadowing video that will help your pronunciation skills. Have you ever heard of the shadowing technique? Perhaps if you've been here before, you have. But this technique is going to be very useful if you want to improve your fluency and your listening skills and also your pronunciation skills. Many polyglots and language learners use it. It's a great way to practice pronunciation as you have to have active engagement throughout the video. Here's how it works. I will tell you an interesting story about England's chances in the 2024 Euro competition. Relevant to now, right? Can this new golden generation come out on top? We're going to find out. You'll hear my evaluation in a second. If you don't know, the goal is to mimic the way I speak to sound as natural as possible by speaking as closely to the way I speak as possible. By doing this, you will be able to speak in a similar way to me. As always, we will finish off with a bonus shadowing section with 10 of the difficult words from the story. That will include definitions as well, so be sure to keep watching until then. First section though, sit back and relax. Listen to the story, try to understand as much as you can, as it will help you get used to the context. This will make it easier for you to do the next section effectively. Don't forget to practice active listening during this section. Here we go. With Euro 2024 just around the corner, everyone's watching England's team, which is packed with top-notch players and they have a solid shot at winning, according to the bookies at least, who are giving odds at 7-2. to two. Gareth Southgate, the boss, has stirred some talk by leaving out experienced players like Jordan Henderson and Marcus Ratchford, opting instead for a mix of young and seasoned players aiming for flexible tactics. Key players like Harry Kane, Jude Bellingham and Phil Foden, fresh from great seasons at their clubs, are expected to shine. England starts their campaign against Serbia, with more games coming up against Denmark and Slovenia. They're favourites to top Group C, and could meet one of the best third-place teams in the knockouts, or, if second, face a group winner in a more challenging match. Injuries, especially in defence, could upset Southgate's plans. The defence, including John Stones and Luke Shaw, need to be solid. Meanwhile, Kane leads a strong attack, having scored heaps for Bayern this season. The challenge for Southgate is to get this talented group playing together smoothly transitioning from defence to attack. The midfielders Bellingham, Rice and Foden will be crucial in setting the pace and switching up the play. Fans and experts are cautiously hopeful that this could be England's year. The team has a blend of young energy and experience and they're poised to take on Europe's best. As the tournament approaches, England has everything they need to go far. The big question is whether they can pull together when it matters most. Here's hoping the lads make us proud and maybe, just maybe, bring football home this summer. Well, that's my opinion on the squad and their chances, but who do you think will win? Tell me in the comments. Now you've listened to the story, it's time to start speaking. We'll go through this section sentence by sentence, giving you some time afterwards to try and repeat the words. Try to imitate me exactly. Remember, don't be shy. If there is a section that is difficult, that's okay. Just be sure to go back and practice again. Practice makes progression. Let's begin. With Euro 2024 just around the corner, everyone's watching England's team. Which is packed with top-notch players and and they have a solid shot at winning. According to the bookies, at least, who are giving odds at 7-2. to two. Gareth Southgate, the boss, has stirred some talk by leaving out experienced players like Jordan Henderson and Marcus Ratchford.
opting instead for a mix of young and seasoned players. Aiming for flexible tactics. Key players like Harry Kane, Jude Bellingham and Phil Foden fresh from great seasons at their clubs, are expected to shine. England starts their campaign against Serbia with more games coming up but against Denmark and Slovenia. They're favourites to top Group C. And could meet one of the best third place teams in the knockouts. Or, if second, face a group winner in a more challenging match. Injuries, especially in defence, could upset Southgate's plans. The defence, including John Stones and Luke Shaw, need to be solid. Meanwhile, Kane leads a strong attack. having scored heaps for Bayern this season. The challenge for Southgate it is to get this talented group playing together smoothly. Transitioning from defence to attack. The midfielders, Bellingham, Rice and Foden, will be crucial in setting the pace and switching up the play. Fans and experts are cautiously hopeful that this could be England's year. The team has a blend of young energy and experience. And they're poised to take on Europe's best. As the tournament approaches, England has everything they need to go far. The big question is whether they can pull together when it matters most. Here's hoping the lads make us proud and maybe, just maybe, bring football home this summer. OK, great job during that section. Now, let's move on to the full shadowing. This time, we will go through the full story. All you have to do is imitate me. Try to speak just after me and copy the way I speak throughout. Let's begin. With Euro 2024 just around the corner, everyone's watching England's team, which is packed with top-notch players and they have a solid shot at winning, according to the bookies at least, who are giving odds at 7-2. Gareth Southgate, the boss, has stirred some talk by leaving out experienced players like Jordan Henderson and Marcus Ratchford, opting instead for a mix of young and seasoned players aiming for flexible tactics. Key players like Harry Kane, Jude Bellingham and Phil Foden, fresh from great seasons at their clubs, are expected to shine. England starts their campaign against Serbia, with more games coming up against Denmark and Slovenia. They're favourites to top Group C, 
and could meet one of the best third-place teams in the knockouts, or, if second, face a group winner in a more challenging match. Injuries, especially in defence, could upset Southgate's plans. The defence, including John Stones and Luke Shaw, need to be solid. Meanwhile, Kane leads a strong attack, having scored heaps for Bayern this season. The challenge for Southgate is to get this talented group playing together smoothly, transitioning from defence to attack. The midfielders Bellingham, Rice and Foden will be crucial in setting the pace and switching up the play. Fans and experts are cautiously hopeful that this could be England's year. The team has a blend of young energy and experience, and they're poised to take on Europe's best. As the tournament approaches, England has everything they need to go far. The big question is whether they can pull together when it matters most. Here's hoping the lads make us proud and maybe, just maybe, bring football home this summer. Before we go on to the bonus section, if you found any of these first three tasks difficult, it's important to go back and try again if you want to improve. The more times you practice with this, the better you will get. Let's go to the bonus section now if you're ready. In this section, we are looking at difficult words that came up in the passage. Perhaps they are new for you. If so, we have this bonus shadowing section to help out. I will give a short explanation of each word or expression and then three examples. The three example sentences are to show you ways that it can be used, but we are also going to use it for shadowing. There will be time after each one for you to repeat. Try to imitate me closely. Around the corner. It means very near in time or space. Summer vacation is just around the corner, so we need to plan our trip. There's a new cafe around the corner that just opened last week. With the deadline around the corner, everyone is working late. Top notch. It means of the highest quality. Excellent. She's received top notch service at the hotel during her stay. The chef prepared a top-notch meal that impressed all the guests. He's a top-notch programmer capable of solving complex problems. To stir. It means to cause an initial movement or action, often of interest or emotion. The news of his resignation stirred quite a bit of controversy in the office. Her speech stirred the audience, leaving them inspired and motivated. The movie trailer stirred excitement among fans. Seasoned. Experienced, especially through long practice or repeated exposure. The seasoned actor delivered a flawless performance. As a seasoned traveller, she knows all the best spots in Europe. He's a seasoned professional when it comes to negotiation. Knockout. A contest, especially in sports in which competitors are eliminated when they lose a match until one remains the winner. 
the team made it to the knockout stage of the tournament. His performance in the second round of the knockout was outstanding. She advanced easily through the first knockout round. Upset. You may know a definition of this, but it's slightly different. It means to disturb or overthrow the usual condition or state of something. The underdog team upset the champions in a shocking victory. The news of the merger upset the stock market. His rude comments upset her greatly. Solid. It means strong, reliable or hard to break. She built a solid reputation in the industry over many years. The evidence against him was solid. They needed a solid plan before starting the project. Heaps of something. It means a lot of something, many things. We have heaps of work to get through today. She'd got heaps of presents for her birthday. There were heaps of people at the concert. Transition. The process or a period of changing from one state or condition to another. The company is in transition from old management to new. He made a smooth transition from college to working life. The transition between the two parts of the movie was seamless. pulled together, to work collectively towards a common goal. If we all pull together, we can finish this project on time. The community pulled together to help those affected by the flood. Pulling together during tough times shows the strength of our team. Go to the comments and try and use some of those in your own sentences. I'll be happy to read them. That's it for this one, but there is more shadowing practices here, so make sure to check out this playlist if you're dedicated to improving your pronunciation.